Hi, this is Gail with Beta Jewelry Diva, and today we are going to do Chainmail 101. Now, Chainmail Jewelry has gotten to be pretty big these days, so I thought I'd go ahead and do a bit of a series on some Chainmail and how you can use it for jewelry. Now, if you're not into jewelry, if you're into the armor and you just want to learn about Chainmail, that's fine and dandy, but really, I'm going to focus on making Chainmail jewelry. Okay, today is going to be um, 101 for the chain mail, and I'm also going to do a 102 that's going to get more in-depth with the, with the weaves and everything, but today we're going to learn the basics of what you need to know for chain mail. So, again, you can see all the lovely chain mails that I've made, and we'll go ahead and talk about what you need to know. If you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up, by the way. So let's get started and talk about the jump rings. Right. When you are buying jump rings, you need to know when the seller is referring to diameter. Are they talking about the outer diameter of the jump ring or the inner diameter? Because it makes a big difference. Your outer diameter is your total size of your jump ring. So if someone says it's a six millimeter outer diameter, it's six millimeters from top to bottom. The inner diameter is this open space in the middle. So if someone says it's a six millimeter inner diameter, then it's six millimeters from this point to this point. In between the inner diameter and the outer diameter, that is the thickness of the wire. So now that you know inner diameter, outer diameter, um, know what you're going to be buying. That's the very most important thing because the relationship to your wire thickness and inner diameter determines your aspect ratio and ta-da! Aspect ratio! I know this is something that people hate to think about doing the math and everything um, but I'll, I'll give you a cheat sheet in a, in a bit but aspect ratio also referred to as AR is the inner diameter of the jump ring divided by the wire thickness. So two examples this first one uses an 18, mil, 18 gauge wire, a four millimeter inside diameter divided by one millimeter wire thickness is a four AR. In the second one, this is a 16 gauge size. So four millimeter inner diameter divided by 1.26 wire thickness, again, 16 gauge equals an AR of 3.1. So when you are doing the various weaves, you're going to sometimes see four or three or five or whatever. You need to know this is aspect ratio. Now, I do have a cheat sheet on one of my websites that I have nothing but chainmail jewelry on. And I'll put a link to that, but um, it calculates a bunch of ARs for you so you don't have to worry about it. So aspect ratio is something you really need to worry about. Um, a lot of times when you buy jump rings for chain mail, it'll already tell you what the AR is. But if you don't know, you can figure it out. Okay, here's more of a visual of what AR really means. These are both 18 gauge jump rings. This one has an AR of about 3.4, this pink one. And this silver colored one has an AR of about 5.9. You can see that if you wanted to put multiple rings through these, you could fit a lot more jump rings through this one than you could through this one. So again, both 18 gauge, different ARs. Now, one other thing that I want to talk to you about is there are really two different kinds of wire gauge measurements out there. There's something called the American wire gauge, which is what we're used to for jewelry here in the United States. Um, 18 gauge is roughly 1.02 millimeters in diameter. There's also something called a standard wire gauge, which is used generally for things like chain mail armor type stuff instead of chain mail jewelry. Standard wire gauge is also used extensively outside the United States, and it is thicker. Now, both of these are 18 gauge, this is American, this is standard, and they are obviously different widths. Keep in mind that roughly anything under 20 millimeter or 20 gauge, excuse me, anything under 20 gauge, the standard 
wire gauge is going to be roughly one size larger. In other words, this is more like a 16 gauge in American. Um, other one is American wire gauge 10 to measures in millimeters and standard wire gauge tends to measure in inches. I know, go figure. But just keep in mind, two different kinds of wire gauges. You need to keep an eye on that. I do have a cheat sheet on my Chainmail Jewelry Patterns website that talks a bit more about all this, and it's a PDF you can download. So, um, you know, just keep in mind, there are two separate measurements out there, and know which one you're getting, because it will affect your Chainmail weave. Okay, here we have the Humble Jump Ring. And I'm using a very large ring today, so you can see it a little bit better. But when you get jump rings, this is the way they're going to look. They're not quite open. They're not quite closed. They're just kind of hanging out in the area between open and closed. So let's see if I can get it in focus. There we go. So you can see that this one is, so oh, the, the ends are just about touching. And I want you to notice something. Take a look at those ends. Look how flush they are. There are two types of jump rings. One of them is called saw cut, and the other is called machine cut. When it comes to chain mail jewelry, you always, 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 always want saw cut rings. Unless you're cutting your own, in which case you just want flush cut. But if you're buying rings, do not buy machine cut for jewelry. Now, it's okay to buy machine cut rings if you're just doing practice stuff, but when it comes to real jewelry, the reason you want it is machine cut rings have angles on them. I mean, they're not flush cut. Just keep that in mind. Now, for these wonderful little rings, we need to either open them or close them when it comes to actually chainmail jewelry. So I'm going to show you how to open and close jump rings. If you know how to do this, it's going to be old hat to you, but in case you don't. Now, you never want to open and close the jump rings this way. You always want to twist them. And this is difficult for me because this is a 14 gauge jump ring, so. But you see how this is twisted? I did not open it this way. I did a twisting motion. That is your open jump ring. Now to close this little guy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist him back. And you can see that I'm getting there. This is uh, just about to where you buy them. I probably should have used a, a smaller gauge to demo, demonstrate because this is really difficult to do on camera. But you can see now that it's really close to being um, fitted together. You can see just a little bit of air in back of the jump ring. So you can see just a little tiny bit of, of space. So what I've got to do is I've got to go ahead and as I'm doing this, I'm pushing them closer and then pushing them and if you hear that little snap that is the jump ring really wanting to close right okay so now I have it closed just about perfect and you know it's perfect when you can barely tell where that seam is so if I turn it this way you can see where the seam is but if I turn it this way, it's almost impossible to detect. So that is how you open and close jump rings. Remember, you always want to twist. You never want to open like this. So now we've talked about this. The next thing we need to talk about is your, are your tools. So stay tuned. Here we go about tools. Time to talk tools. We are going to talk about the various pliers that you may come across, what to look for, what to be careful of. First, we're going to go over shapes. This is a chain nose plier, and you can see that it has a flat inside jaw, and then it comes to a very sharp point at the end. This is a very fine chain nose plier. And you can see that even if this one was not covered by the Tool Magic, um, it wouldn't be as sharp a point. But you can see they all have the inside jaw is flat with the chain nose pliers and this lets you see better how flat they are so alright we've got chain nose pliers here 
And this is yet another chain nose plier that has a fairly um, uh, fine tip to it. Next we're going to talk about flat nose pliers. And here's a pair of flat nose pliers. And you can see that the jaw is very wide. So it's very different from the chain nose plier where the chain nose plier has a very sharp tip to it. These have a very wide tip to them. And these are useful, especially when working with larger gauge jump rings, um, because you need more gripping area when you're working with larger gauge. When you're working with smaller gauge, I tend to like to work with the chain nose a little bit more. Now a relative is going to be a bent nose plier. So you can see that it's called bent nose for a reason. It has a very bent nose to it. And then it comes to a pretty fine point. So let's see that point. And what I usually use these for, and I really love the bent nose pliers, is I use them this way. And so if I'm gripping a ring, I grip it with this elbow. And it gives me a really nice tight grip. Um, some people love bent nose. Some people hate bent nose. All up to you. Now, what kind of pliers should you get? Should you get real expensive ones? Should you get real cheap ones? Rule of thumb is get the best ones that you can afford. Now you can see that <laughs> China, um, this one is a, let me see, bead lending or landing. Um, I think I got this one probably from Joann's or something. This one is, I think, a beadsmith. So this is this was actually a, a fairly expensive for beadsmith. I think it was about fifteen dollars or so. This was probably about mm, five dollars. Same thing for this one. This is not a real expensive one, uh, made in India. Um, these are my Lindstrom pliers, and you can see they're very well loved. <laughs> because I've had them, but these are just wonderful, wonderful pliers. Now, these are very expensive. You're going to be paying $50, $60 for a pair, but this one has lasted me years and years and years and years and years, and I've used it quite a bunch. Here's another one that um, yeah, it wasn't too terribly expensive. I think this was probably about another $10 or $15 plier, and this has worked very nicely, too. Um, I do cover a lot of my pliers in Tool Magic. I do have a video on why I use Tool Magic, but I always keep some pliers uncovered um, because if I need to get into a very, very tight space, this is obviously going to have less of a um, diameter at the very tip than would something call, um, with Tool Magic on the end. So I always keep something, and usually it's my Lindstrom's, um, naked, so to speak. Um, you always have to have at least two pairs of pliers, whether you have two chain nose, two flat nose, or some variation. It doesn't really matter, but whatever you do, do not get one with like sawtooth on the interior or rough interior because you will mar your rings. I guarantee it. Done it before. <laughs> Been there, done that. So when you, whenever you get them, just make sure you have a very smooth surface on the interior. Okay, so we've gone through pliers, we've gone through jump rings and gauges. Now, what about our wonderful jewelry? Well, that is going to be a separate video because, like I said, these were going kind of long. <laughs> So I'm going to put a Chainmail 102 that is going to be all about the different weaves and talking about Chainmail jewelry. So look for that. Meanwhile, if you thought Chainmail 101 was very useful to you, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I will put all the various links um, below the video so you can go ahead and download those documents, etc., etc. And anyway, this is Gail signing out saying hope you have a great day. Um, look for Chainmail 102 and see you later. Bye.